What's up guys, Shay Stevens here, PDGA number 77522, and it's time for the back nine of my round at Tyler, playing the Yetter 2024 layout on the west side. Let's get to it. And kicking things off on hole 28. The sign says 435, but I think that's the old distance because they moved this tee back a while ago. Yeah, it's gotta be because I'm shooting a tree by B pin and it's almost 500 feet. So I'm guessing this is probably 550, 600. But last year's Jetter, I watched guys like Andrew Fish just throw mid range, mid range and have eagle putts for this. So uh, I'm gonna mimic them. I'm going reactor. Right up the gut here, hopefully just missing the big tree in the middle. Either side will do. Ooh, cooked it over a little bit. All right, we're living on the edge. Alrighty, so over here on the edge, just try not to do too much with it. I wanted to go backhand, but I'm not liking how tight it is, so. We will be going forehand again, kids. I'm thinking, thinking Terra is the play. I've been forehanding it really nicely. Getting some great throws out of it backhand too. So baskets that way, so it's gonna be the pain is that. I'm gonna do like one of these moves. All right, that's not a problem. We're just going for fairway. We're not trying to get too much off this. <clears throat> All right, we're by the A pin, and that's actually pretty open. Uh, I kind of checked my swings of that. There's all this nice open green space over here. I should really start trying to enjoy it. So, tight ceiling. And I need, a, I need to get at least three-fourths of the way there. I feel like to be safe. So I'm going to try stand still photon. Just so I can punch it low, get some turnover, and it should be so low that it shouldn't have any issues, uh, you know, worrying about drifting out of bounds. I might have a, I might have a putt, guys. Woohoo! And somebody's calling me. That's ah, my mommy. All right, so a wild third shot has netted me a very undeserved birdie look and I've apparently aggravated some ants as well so can't go straight at it Beth the tree's taking away like a third of the basket straddle putts or scoobers what are we feeling I think straddle putts the way to go get the legs going <laughs> did not deserve that but I'm taking it all right, guys, that one was not a new hole, but I'll still argue it's a very soft par five. I threw two bad shots, one Hail Mary, and still had the putt for birdie. Uh, went on to hole 29, Stonehenge, par four, 561, up and to the left. Play here for me is I just play down the right towards B pin, and then hopefully have a lane up to the basket. I'm going with my Volt, just nice and straight. Get a little finish left maybe at the end for bonus. Ooh, I cooked that. Oh no. Ugh, I just ripped that one over into the heart of darkness. Hey guys, so no audio for this clip, unfortunately. I am really deep in the stuff, as you can see. It took a while to find. I'm actually chatting with somebody who was playing old 28 and lost one in the same spot too. So yeah, misery loves company. But uh, in getting my camera back here, I didn't realize that the receiver for my wireless mic had come unplugged. So uh, yeah, no audio for this clip. Unfortunately, I'm just grabbing my fission photon, punching out and making it just to the edge of the rough. Testing. Testing. Oh. Sorry guys, that fight was so arduous I didn't realize my uh, my mic came unplugged. So yeah, found the disc, just had to punch out to the edge of the uh, fairway here. Just gonna try to take the volt up and to the right. Or I'm sorry, up and to the left. I just gotta miss that pencil tree. And also, you know, hit the, 
you know, field goal and the field goal behind that and missed the log and God, I hate this hole. Oh, that's left. Oh, we are having fun. I guess I said to take a little break to calm myself. Also wipe down with some alcohol wipes. Uh, call me Poison Ivy. I'm sorry. Call me, call me Harley Quinn because I got Poison Ivy all over me. DC jokes. All right. I'm just going to try and get this electron entropy up there for a putt. Ooh. Just carried the log. Should be cool. And I say with absolute confidence, that is not how to play hole 29. Get me out of here. Right. My legs are on fire. My shoulder hurts. Why did I decide to play the west side for fun? Alright. Hole 30. Tilt. It's up in the C pin. So par 4. 345 feet, but again, I don't know if the camera does this incline justice. Like I'm about to full rip a flippy fission photon up the hill, basically at that pencil tree in the middle. Hopefully miss it. And then Jesus take the wheel from there. Ooh, and a kick to the left. <laughs> Going on another adventure. Sorry for these lousy camera angles, guys. I don't got much to work with here. It is all my fault. So it needs to be a forehand to get to the basket, but I have this right here. High backhand is possible, but as a tight line and a lot of carry. I'm gonna try and smooth the uplink, just something I know. Give me a little more extra distance. And also, We'll glide extra with that low ceiling about the challenge. Uh, plus I hit that branch right there. <sighs> Wheels are coming off, guys. The only thing more exciting than the prospect of getting off this hole is realizing how many times I'm probably going to have to blur my phone number because I definitely flashed it a bunch of times to the camera this round. Right, anode under the basket. Got lucky. Thank you. Another hard, hard fought. Ah, hard fought par. Cardio is not my friend. I can hear Gyro Viking yelling at me now. And we're back, guys. I just took a little break, caught my breath, got a drink. Because if I slurred my speech anymore, I could run for president. I also threw a couple shots, full disclosure, just trying to smooth out my shoulder here. It's not feeling so great after the forehands on the front nine, so I am trying to take it easy now. So this whole 600 foot out into the field, tree across the fairway is new. That's you know not club design, I'm sure, but if you wanted to throw a roller, tough luck. Uh, so I'm just going to try and go nice, easy rhythm. I'm just trying to get above, across the log is the goal. You know, through the chute, across the log, out into that sunny spot would be ideal. And then we'll play from there. Ah, oh, snipe down. All right, boys, this is a tight one again. So we just, we're trying to get up to have a look to get up and down and save the par. All right, so it would either be a forehand roller or just a forehand. Sorry, things are buzzing around me and I don't like it. Especially if you're getting tagged already on the ankle this week. Just going to go forehand with the fizzy volt. Nice, easy, just get me up there. <clears throat> Ooh, I might have hit the bailout on the right, luckily. Ladies and gentlemen, they say you either die a hero or live long enough to become a villain. Out here is the fairway. And the basket is through here, right up there. I see a very leafy window. I'm already suffering. We're going for it. So I'm gonna go 
pyro. Let's go, buddy. Where are you at? I'm gonna try and just burn one through the roof, through that window, and give myself a putt. <clears throat> Take the branch. I think I got one, guys. <laughs> We're back. Yeah, guys, if, if I had gotten knocked down back in that rough, that would have been the start of my villain arc. But I got lucky, just clipped one branch, but got this for a stupid par again. All right, guys, new hole, new me. Hole 19, 319 foot, par three. Basket is behind the right tree, so the goal is to try and go a little bit long of it. I'm just going to full send the envy and let it do envy things. Just need to be confident, get that swing going. Be stable. Come on. Yes. Whew. That felt good. Right, so, as you can see, this green. Super hard to stick, or I'm sorry, super hard to get a look at this basket because the tree is blocking it. I luckily split the field goal and have a look. So. And that is ideal, the B pin is on the other side of this tree over here. Kind of a peekaboo hole. I needed that on a, on a physical, emotional, and spiritual level. Okay, hole 33, par 5, 552 foot, way uphill though. And I love this hole just because of the, the trap here off the, the AT. The fairway is basically at your shoulders, about 30 feet in front of you, or my, you know, shorty, short shoulders. So you think you're throwing flat and you end up just turfing it and usually cut roll into the rough. So you do have to throw this disc up. It's just very visually deceptive. And it's just a really fun par five. So game plan here is a smash fission photon. Hopefully get to those big trees out there and then play from there. I need one good driver through just to get me back in this game. Come on. Not terrible. Oh, I mean, that left side rough, though. Felt better, at least. All right, guys, I'm guessing this is absolute jaily jail. Ah, there's a little bit of sky, but I'm just trying to get to the fairway to work from there. So let's get, get my stance legal. Perfect dead center. All right, so I got to the middle, uh, but I gave myself no run-up. So I'm going to stand still with fizzy photons. I'm just seeing a shadow through the leaf trying to figure out what the heck it is. That's a bug I've never seen before. So stand still, fission photon. I'm just trying to get up the hill as far as I can. Preferably up to that big tree there you can see. And left is safe, so that's the goal. If anything, we're left side rough, but like just in it, so not terrible. So, one was in the rough, two was chipped out, three was here. So this is my paw, uh, this is my birdie, I think, right? Yeah, so, could birdie run this. And actually, I can give it a safe hyzer bit, I think. We're going electron entropy. Round the outside, round the outside. Oop, hopefully that didn't get a goofy roll. Should be a simple tap in, but of course the headwind comes up. Nothing for granted. All right. Struggle bus pars. All right guys, the last big changes are the final three holes. 
So hole 34, they pulled the C pin, moved it further out towards the road. It's a 502 foot par four. This is the old short pad, or rather that was the old short pad and they pulled it back. The, old, the long pad is now the short. So you got two fairways it looks like here you gotta hit. The high grass comes way in though from where it used to be on the left. So I'm guessing the right fairway is the better one. I'm gonna go with my more stable fission reactor down the gut. Hopefully it'll check up towards the end, not go long out the, uh, to the OB road. But I need to hit a gap, which has certainly been a problem today. Full disclosure, my shoulder is screaming right now. I should not be playing, but three holes won't kill me, right? Beat that stuff, come on. All right, what I wanted. All right, so for perspective, you guys are standing directly on top of the A pin right now. C pin used to be over there along the spine of the hill, but now it's all overgrown grass. They let it grow out. And now the basket is over there towards the parking lot. And then they have the grass tapered into with flags. I had to perch the camera up on the hill. All right, this should just be a stock hyzer shot. So we're going to go out to the right towards like that kiosk. And then hopefully the disc will just crash in. If anything, it skips on the road towards the basket. Right side feels like the miss. Oh my, terribly short. All right, this should not be this hard. But I left myself a C2 putt with a bit of death behind it. All right, this should just be like putting in the Chamonix Creek, station five. Because station three is harder than five for some reason. If you know, you know. Ah, I clanked it. Ugh. Okay, hole 35 is completely different now. The, the first ever hole aced in disc golf is no more. It just lives in my memories and on my YouTube channel. So it's a par four. Hard dog leg left with a mando there on the corner. Looks like they may have shimmied the C pin basket more left too. All right, so two shot hole. I'm guessing shot one is just put a reactor right up the gut. And then if I push long, okay, is there, does it say there's OB long? Ah, so it is saying the tree line is gonna be OB too. That's gonna be fun. All right, so we're gonna go with my more stable reactor. If I go long, what the heck? I actually don't think I can, you know, full gas a shot anymore. I'm getting old, guys. All right. Might be long, might be great. We'll find out. All right, so yeah, just challenged that long OB. Could use some more flags on this side, though. Kind of, I think I'm short of the flags but if i follow the line i'm short of it oh, so a little bit of a heady wind so i gotta push a electron hp down the right hand side towards that unfortunate fellow who's currently looking for his ob disc on 36 and it should check into the basket I think I left myself more work than I wanted to, guys. Uh, got no zip in all these last couple holes. And once again, shorted an up shot that I should not have shorted. It's in my range. Just gotta get going, get the legs in it. Uh, get the legs going, get the line, get these bugs out of my eyes. Uh, get a par. Say, hole 36 wrapping up has gotten longer, guys. It's now a par five, 910 feet to the C pin, which is still on the island. I'm not a big fan of that. So, trees to the right play is OB. Doesn't say anything about this intermediate high grass on the right. Grass on the left is OB. For perspective, the T pad for old hole 35 is about 25 feet behind you guys. So yeah, honestly, if it's a par five, 
if I can just get past the long tee pad, everything else is just added bonus. But it's the last hole. I have some really nice ice packs waiting for me at home. So I'm gonna try and eat a fission photon to see how much I can bite off. And I finally connect on a good one. I'm hoping that high grass is cut the way I think it's cut or that I got a good roll. Ooh, so that worked out about as good as I could expect. So I have the choice now. Do I go for it or lay up? And honestly, I'm saying YOLO, we're going for it. So I got fission photos out of my hand. I'm playing to the right side because if I miss right side, I get all the distance at least and I'll be out in the open for a uh, throw for four after that. And if it hides out early, I have a little bit of contingency plan or a little bit of buffer. <sighs> nope, deep in the high grass, right? So, I risked it for the biscuit, but there were no delicious nom noms for me. Keep it close to the OB for extra distance. So no matter what, it is gonna take me two shots to get on this green. So there's no point in trying to go for too much. I'm gonna go stable fission volt. Basically right at the OB, the long OB. Cause if I go long OB, I at least get the distance and have a step out into clearing to throw. If I go in early here and never establish inbounds, it's bad times. So let's get some distance at least. I think we're cool. All right guys, so no painted lines, but flag to flag. I'm about 50% in, I'd say. I'll take small blessings and a meter in off the OB. And now I gotta get there. So usually I throw entropy from a little further up, so a pyro from back here should work, right? Hang it out to the right, challenge the ceiling a little bit, and we should be cool. Skip off the road and onto the green. <sighs> I'll take two luckies. Okay, a familiar look for me to end this. Although I hate this angle. Fun fact, if you like square up the middle chain with the center of the pole of the Mach 5, there's two big windows, left side and right, that you're just gonna just get turned through. And mine has a tendency to do that. But we need to think positive. We need to think we're gonna hit the pole, it's gonna go in the basket, and I get to go home. That's the fun part. <sighs> well guys, it's been a bit of a drag at the end, but we got it done. That would be a six, right? Let's see, yep, so that's gonna put me, I think I'm still under par though, right? Well, I'm either under par or even or somewhere close, but uh, yeah, it's been my round. Yeah, the last three holes are in very different from what we're used to. So uh, for final thoughts, I'll turn it back over to Shay. And that's a wrap for my round on the west side of Tyler and it's new hardest configuration. Again, guys, sorry for the low energy. You know, it was a long day, but still, I shot a minus one but it doesn't feel like I deserve that score. Just back in the day when you shot under par on a getter layout, you were proud of yourself. That was an accomplishment. And now I just feel like it's very soft. Uh, I said I would hold my thoughts on all the hole changes until the end of the video, just so I can collect my thoughts. So uh, let's get to that. Reminder, on the east side, the only hole that changed was hole five. The T-pad got dropped level to the ground and brought back about 30 feet. I really appreciate that change. Previously, that hole is a very soft par four. Uh, a lot of pros were getting it with very soft shots, just like little flex mid-ranges or even fairway drivers. Uh, and, you know, it wasn't a big risk. Usually, a tree kick would just leave you a little upshot for the birdie. And now, I think it is a more true two-shot par four. You have to be very careful with your placement off the tee. Uh, you got to navigate those big trees on the inside right just to get around to give yourself a nice look into the uh, green to get that birdie. And like I said, I believe I, I talked about in the... Uh, front or the uh east side video 
the Yetter this year. I don't think it had any Eagles on it, whereas last, uh, previous years you've seen like five or six. So uh, good change, I feel, uh, I think. Now onto the west side. First hole change is hole 20. Long tee pad or tee pad got pulled back and the par got changed to four first off. Don't think it's a par four. It's a high blue three, maybe low gold three at best. Just if you have a competent forehand and can blast it down the middle and dump out, you're you're going to give yourself an eagle look. Uh, if you're, you know, really, you know, aggressive and throw a hyzer flip turnover to Annie, you can cut the corner and actually drop in the green as well. Have a two look. I've seen that done already. Um, And then just, I feel like the play, just being conservative, just put a shot just down the hill, chip around the corner, and you have a look at a birdie. Worst case scenario, you get a par and you walk out. Uh, I've actually played it a few times and... I've hit the Guardians actually a couple times. I've been kicked into the left side rough. And I've just punched a shot down the hill, chipped up, and again, got a par. I don't feel like I'm being penalized. Uh, from the old T-pad, when it's a par three, I have taken bogeys and double bogeys plenty of times on that hole. So uh, I just feel like it's been softened. Now, my other two concerns are about safety and pace of play, which are more concerning to me. You can't see the bottom of the hill. So unless you are diligent and looking down the hill when you're walking from 19 to 20... You won't know if there's anyone down there. So you have, hopefully you're you know cautious enough to walk up to the old long tee pad and look down to make sure the way is clear before you throw. My concern again is just you know you're thinking about players. We have plenty of do uh, dog walkers who just kind of walk through our fairways because they're nice, pa nice pads who just could walk through that area and you wouldn't know if you're back on the tee pad getting ready to throw if they're in your line of fire. Uh, likewise, safety. Uh, if you saw in this video, the play is if you're playing you know just for par or for birdie, just Heiser flips something straight down the middle. And if you put, you could easily push along if you throw a mid range and go onto 21s, uh, onto hole 21. So if there's people playing hole 21, you could be, you know, bringing them into the line of fire because honestly, it's a decent play. Just blast long in the hole, and there are a bunch of hides your lines back into the basket. Uh, so that's kind of the safe play. Uh, but again, not a kind of a safety issue. And then in terms of pace of play, likewise, you can't see people down there. You can't see where your disc lands 90% of the time. So uh, I've had two shots now where I've spent combined 20 minutes looking for them where I would have easily seen them from the old tee pad. Uh, one just kind of, uh, glanced a tree on the left and shot into the right side rough. And a second was, I was going for that aggressive turnover to Annie and it just went short in the rough and actually pinned behind the big tree on the corner. And just because the disc happened to be like flush against the tree, I didn't see it for a while. Uh, but you know, kind of a pain in the butt, just looking for discs when they should be easy to find. Uh, so those are my complaints about hole 20. Next change, hole 26 lengthened uh, or added a new pin position uh, long to add, make it a par five. Again, I feel like it just softened the hole up. The old par four position on top of that hill, kind of a signature of the course. It demanded a very good, well-placed tee shot. You had to get enough distance and put it in the right spot to be able to attack the green on that bowl hill. And then you had to have a really well-placed up shot to have a look at the birdie. And nine times out of 10, it was still a scary putt. So uh, now I'm just putting a shot somewhere down in the flat by the a pin and then i'm just blasting over the hill of what was the old c pin and hope just you know chipping one up in worst case scenario getting a par again not i'm not getting punished whereas fives and sixes were a common occurrence on the old pin position uh so you know i've oh, i played once yeah i've played at least five times and i've never taken anything worse than a par on it so uh yeah not a big fan of that change uh, likewise, the walking, you either have to walk back into the line of fire uh, towards the T of 26, or you have to walk up and around, like I said, towards the, what is the A pin of 27. So uh, kind of clearing out of that hole is a bit sketchy. And then moving on to hole, uh, it's the final three. Uh, so hole 34, uh, so we saw the short T pad lengthened to become the new long T pad. Old long pad is short, and they got rid of, I presume, just the C pin, moved it over towards the parking lot. Again, soft par four. I feel like that was a great par three. You had to throw a heck of a shot, risk going OB to give yourself a birdie putt back when it was the C pin. And you had, there was a bailout to the right, which I thought was nice. You just you know concede par, go out to the right, hopefully you know get out the gap, and then chip up and get the three or possibly four. Now you just kind of get a shot out the gap. Like you saw I threw a conservative mid-range and then upshot, which I kind of flubbed. But now I realize you can just kind of let, be aggressive on the upshot because worst case scenario is you probably are going to go out of bounds uh, either left or long of the basket, in which case you're like looking at a 25 footer for par. So, uh, you know, being aggressive isn't punished too terribly. And my real concern, again, kind of safety, 
if someone is trying to drive this green, it is very drivable. I've done it. Um, if you hyzer flip something and get it to flat and just keeps pushing, you could easily hit a car in that parking lot. And the thing about the Hickory Nut parking lot is it's never open unless somebody is paying to rent that picnic area. So if people are paying to be in that space and they take a disc and take a disc to their back windshield, probably not going to be happy about it. So some concern there, and obviously people could be there. And if you really smash one, you could put it into the picnic area. Although I think at that point, if you have the arm to get there, you know the shot and you won't mess up that badly. But uh, I think by the time a disc gets there, it's going slow enough that it won't hurt anybody, but still could tick some people off. So kind of a PR issue on that one. Hole 35 went from being a pretty tricky, I'd say blue level uh, par three to a very soft par four. Again, like you had to throw a very low piercing tunnel shot to get through that late gap uh, if you're going straight for the basket in the old C pin, or you would have to throw a big kind of like forehand hyzer around the trees to give yourself a look. Uh, so I thought it was a good separator hole. Uh, it did demand some you know, technicality toward the end of your uh, round. Now, I'm just throwing either a flat over stable or a stabled mid-range on hyzer and just kind of throwing to the corner. And then again, I just have a hyzer upshot. I flubbed the putt this time around, or I shorted the upshot, actually. Uh, but I've gotten it every time I've played it since. Uh, if you want to get aggressive, you can go with a hyzer over that right side tree and kind of splash in to get, to get a little more up the shoot if you want. But uh, still, I think it's just an easy, like, you're throwing putters and mids uh, on this par four just to, you know, again, make it a par four. It feels soft. Uh, it, it wouldn't be a par three, unfortunately. There's no way to really make it a par three. It's an, it would be an ungettable par three. But I think it's a very soft four. Hey guys, Future Shea here doing some editing and realized I only gave complaints about Hole 35 and didn't really offer any solutions and I hate when people do that, so I think I got an idea for Hole 35 that might toughen it up a bit and make it more of a true par 4. So, I feel like the real weakness of the hole is the approach shot just isn't scary. Yes, there's OB high grass left and the wood line on the right is OB too, I presume, but it is just a stock backhand hyzer shot or flat to hyzer. It is so hard to mess that up to the point where you would find yourself in out of bounds. So I think the trick to making this hole a little more scary, going to a satellite view here, make it a forced carry. Take the OB from the high grass and extend it straight to the wood line. Now you are thinking off the tee, do I want to throw that comfortable mid-range shot just to the corner, maybe a little inside it, and leave myself a longer upshot now where I have trees to contend with uh, for a ceiling and a distance check both short and long of the green? Or am I going to, you know, sacrifice the birdie, just lay up to the C pin, and then go across on my third shot uh, and go for the par? Likewise, if you want to get aggressive now, you can take that driver on hyzer over that wide tree or inside with something over stable and get skippy uh, to get more up the shoot, to give yourself a more comfortable upshot. But now you're risking that OB short and long on the fairway off the tee. So I think that would bring a little more mental stress into the shot and make the hole a little harder. And as a bonus, you would have to mow the grass less. You just have to cut a strip straight from the fairway to the green for players to walk. Uh, so you're going to save yourself some time and some gas money. So I think that one's a win-win. Now, back to the video. And then lastly, hole 36 becoming a par 5 by making a new long tee pad. Um, again, it just feels really soft. Uh, I have not taken anything worse than the, bo the bogey on this round. was my worst ever done. I've parted every time I've played it since, playing very conservatively. Because all you do is just... Pump a drive over the long tee pad, uh, preferably being the short tee pad too, and then you just play it like you used to, and your angles are better because you've got you've bitten off more distance. Uh, you know, you're throwing from further up than you would from throwing back on the old tee pads, and yeah, just you know, I don't feel the danger. Like I felt fear off the tee shot of it when it was a par four off the old long tee pad because you had to throw something biting off distance and you know making sure that. You didn't turn over to the right and put yourself in the wood line or sawing off early and going OB and just, you know, taking a stroke right off the bat. Now the drive is very comfortable. just kind of it naturally fades left. So uh, if anything, you can just bite off them with a big flex shot, in which case you're still getting a lot of distance. And you might flip OB, but it's really hard to with how the grass is cut. And then, yeah, I think you, just have, a, you have a better angle of attack into the shoot uh, to get yourself, you know, a look at birdie. Whereas before you would have to like push into the shoot to give yourself a comfortable look or, you know, I'd say a reasonable look to go for the green and two from when it was a par four. I was also kind of hoping they would pull the, the basket off the island. I don't like it just because, you know, the roads around it. No, really low risk of hitting a car, but still on like pot on pack days, there's people and cars around. Uh, so hoping they would actually take the pin and put it up 
where the B pin is, there is now a practice basket further up. I was really hoping they would use that sleeve and make that the par five. I think that would make it scary because then your drive, you know, you put it out, you know, past the short tee pad, and then you got to decide, am I going to go to the shoot and then over, or am I going to try and be big and cut the whole field? Uh, I think that would have made it a nasty par five. But, uh, yeah, I just feel like, again, I was taking fives and sixes before on that hole. I've built many a snowman back when it was a par four, uh, and now it just feels a little bit softer. So, uh, overall, again, it just it feels soft. I think my best round playing that, uh, again, just another after work round with my backup bag, I shot minus five. So, uh, I feel like overall the, the West side just got a par 72 layout for the sake of saying it has a par 72 layout. I don't know what the purpose really is. I mean, the old standard for an NT was to have a part, you must be able to offer a par 72 layout, but there's no more NTs anymore. And sadly, I think time in the sport has passed Tyler in that regard. You know, it's a great course and all, but I don't think it's a, you know, tour worthy or even a you know an nt or major level course anymore you might be able to pull like an am worlds or a uh, you know maybe a women's uh you might be able to use it for the uh the women's major the uh uswdgc or maybe you know the masters tour is developing they might be interested in that kind of layout but overall i just feel like it kind of it changed things you know it changed things up which is nice you know it's not the same i'm not walking to the hole and throwing the same two discs every time now i got you know new holes new attack uh patterns uh, but it just, you know, it feels like it got changed just to make it a par 72 when it's, I don't feel like it's a true par 72. So, uh, you know, those are my thoughts again, sorry for the low energy. And as I promised to make up for that, uh, at the end of my last round, uh, or on the, uh, the front nine video, I am doing a giveaway for a disc. Uh, so, uh, to win that disc, all you have to do is comment down below and tell me somebody called me during this round. Uh, I got a phone call, uh, just tell me who gave me a call during the round. So comment down below, tell me who gave me a phone call during the round, and uh, that'll get you in the running for a giveaway, and I'll do a drawing probably at the start of one of my future videos, uh, and the winner will get a disc from me. So, uh, you guys, I just want to thank you for all your support. If you have any questions for me, reach out. I'll do my best to answer them. Take care. Thank you to my sponsors. For all your disc golf needs, check out Phoenix Discs and Foundation Disc Golf.